Hi, it's me, a person that will give you extremely helpful advice. I have two PhDs in surviving college dorm rooms. That's right, I got my first PhD, then I went back and got it again to be doubly certified. Basically, I was in a college dorm room for two years of my life, so I have a lot of experience. In this video, I'll be giving some essential advice to surviving in a college dorm room. All of this advice is under the assumption that you have a roommate. I know that there are some dorm options where you pay more money to get your own room to yourself. Yeah, that's for weaklings. So, lesson one, how to interact with the other people in your dorm hall, aka your floor mates. You may make good friends with some of your floor mates and do things like go and eat dinner together every night, or even off-campus activities like bowling or something. You could also just kind of ignore them and not really talk. It's whatever. Bottom line is, no matter how much you like or dislike them, your floor mates are like your family. Meaning you don't date them. You know that cute boy that lives two doors down? His name is Tyler. And now that you live on the same floor, he's Uncle Tyler. You wouldn't date your uncle? Don't date him. Getting into a relationship with someone on the same dorm floor as you is called floor cest. It could be tempting, but I would like to strongly discourage it. This is because if it doesn't work out, things can get really unpleasant, and there's no escaping it because you pretty much live together. I will admit, I did partake in floor cest myself. Things didn't work out between us, but luckily, we were both cool and there weren't any serious repercussions. But I was young and naive and would not take that risk again if the situation presented itself. Lesson 2. This is about dorm nightlife. Basically, right when you're trying to go to bed, all of your floor mates come out of their room and play the slam the door and run down the hall game. It sounds just like this. <laughs> I've never played it before myself, or even seen it happen. I just assume that's what they're doing based on the noises I hear in the hallway. If this does happen to occur to you, don't worry, you can have fun too. If you're going to bed when they're playing games in the hall, it can be assumed that you'll be waking up before them. So, as soon as you get up in the morning, it's your job to serenade them with the nice, soothing sounds of copyright-free DEATH METAL MUSIC! <laughs> Lesson 3. Bathrooms. Chances are your dorm will have community bathrooms. So, when you shower, make sure to use some form of foot protection. Anything to separate your supple, weak, and vulnerable foot skin from the floor. For all you know, the bubonic plague is culturing on the ground. The other people in the dorm do unholy things on those floors, from throwing up every Friday night because they drank too much orange juice, to ritual goat sacrifices in the showers. I would feel really bad for the janitors. If they hadn't erased my whiteboard hand drawing, screw you guys, you deserve to wipe up somebody's vomit on a weekly basis. I got no sympathy for you. <clears throat> Lesson four is to take advantage of the resources provided to you. Now, this will vary depending on where you go to college, but the key is to think outside the box. For example, free toilet paper was provided in all the dorms where I went to college. You could literally just ask for it or take one of the rolls that were stacked in the bathrooms. Because of this, toilet paper was my paper towels, tissues, napkins, clothing, you name it. I even sometimes used it as actual toilet paper. I know that dining halls aren't dorms, but chances are if you are in a dorm, you'll also be eating at the dining hall. Our dining halls were basically set up in a buffet style, so you would buy a certain amount of meal passes, then each time you used a meal pass, you had access to all the food they had out. I made sure to get my money's worth each time I went there. I had a water bottle that I would fill up with various things, like milk, so I didn't have to pay for that. Or I would just take it to the ice cream station and fill it up with the mini M&Ms that they had as toppings. It was just a water bottle full of M&Ms. It was great. For lunch, the dining hall would have these delicious chocolate chip cookies available. I would take like five of them, then use two napkins to wrap them up in a neat little brick to be smuggled out. You know how in rap songs, when they say bricks, they usually mean bags of cocaine? Yeah, well my bricks were cookies wrapped in napkins. Don't do drugs, by the way. 
Lastly, let's talk about doing laundry. Before you even go to the laundry room, you better be prepared for all of the washers and dryers to be taken. So, this leaves you with two options. One is to just not do your laundry. It's a safe, simple, hassle-free option, a perfectly reasonable choice to make. Option two is to actually try and do your laundry. So, you, being a naive fool, go to the laundry room with the expectation of actually washing your clothes. <laughs> what an idiot. Anyways, you get there, and of course, all of the washers are being used, but there's hope! You see one of the washers has only five minutes left, so you decide to wait it out. Five minutes after the washer is done, the person who used it still hasn't come to get their clothes. After another five minutes, one of the other washers is done, but the person using it has another load to put in. After waiting another five minutes, you decide to just take the person's clothes out for them. It's a passive-aggressive thing to do, but you are left with no other choice. In the middle of taking their clothes out, the owner of the clothes comes in to see you holding their wet underwear. You awkwardly mumble some gibberish about needing to use the washer and get out of their way so they can take care of their clothes. The tension is so thick you could cut it with a knife. They load their clothes into the dryer and leave. You finally have a washer to use. Unfortunately, you don't have the luxury of time to separate your clothes into darks and lights and do them in separate loads, so you just do them all at once. You leave and wait for your clothes to wash. You come back when they're done and put them in the dryer. Things are actually going smoothly now. You leave again and come back about five minutes later after the dryer finished, only to find that someone has already unloaded your clothes when the cycle was finished so they could put their own in. This is fine, you think to yourself, until you realize the dorm dryers suck and your clothes are still damp. You see the little bit, because the dryer you were using is now taken and none of the other ones are available. You finally accept defeat. Carrying your basket of damp clothes, you slowly walk back to your room. It's time to end the misery. You have some rope in your closet, saved for this particular occasion. Solemnly, you wedge it in the top of your door, making sure it is strong enough to hold a lot of weight. Then, you get on your chair, and tie the other end of the rope to your bed so you can hang your wet clothes on it and they can actually freaking dry! The moral is to just not bother doing your laundry. I hope you found this advice somewhat helpful. I've made a whiteboard style video like this once before, and it was well received and fun to make, so I figured I'd do it again. Speaking of whiteboard animations, if you want to learn to make your own, then this video sponsor can help you out. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes in art, lifestyle, technology, and more. The premium membership gives you unlimited access to high-quality classes on must-know topics, so you can improve your skills and unlock new opportunities in the fields you love. Check out all these videos that they have for making whiteboard animations. If you use them, yours will certainly look better than mine. But there are also tutorials in just about any art-related topic you can imagine. Skillshare is very affordable compared to other learning platforms, with an annual subscription costing less than $10 a month. But that's not all. The first 500 people to sign up will get their first two months for free. So go to skl.sh slash crabbit or click the link in the description. Remember, as Arnold Schwarzenegger once said, the day you stop learning is the day you start dying. So by association, Skillshare keeps you alive. Yay! I did stream a lot of the process for this video on Twitch, mainly to prove that I am actually working on something, but if you feel like that's something you'd like to watch, then you should check out my channel. Link in the description. Anyway, thanks, bye.